Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo, the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Micah Christensen. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks. So Micah is a scholar of European, Asian, and American fine art and decorative objects. He earned his doctorate in the history of art from University College London. He's a partner at Anthony's Fine Art and Antiques, and that's actually where we are here today in Salt Lake City, and co-author of the Dictionary of Utah Fine Artists. And um, in 2016, Micah co-founded the Zion Art Society and Zion Art Podcast, documenting the careers of LDS artists, which I highly recommend. It's a great podcast. Today we're looking um, at the scriptures in Mosiah chapters 1 through 3. And the piece that we're looking at is by Arnold Freeberg. It shows King Benjamin and Mosiah. It's from the early 1950s. And this is a, a graphite on paper, so a drawing. Um, Micah, can you first tell us a little bit about how you found this piece? And, and I know there's a whole collection of his drawings that you've worked with. That's right. So um, we were thrilled to get, we feel like we kind of saved them from destruction, about 300 Book of Mormon drawings. Wow. That, and I know you've done some scholarly work in trying to contextualize and just figure out what it is. That's right. All the pieces represent. Um, and you've done a couple of publications on this, right? Yes, we did an exhibition when it first, uh, when, when we first got all of the things that we had. So the image that we've got in front of us mm -hmm. of Benjamin and Mosiah, and it's actually annotated. It's got his handwriting mm -hmm. on it. King Benjamin and Mosiah. Mm -hmm. Dates from the first eight paintings. So the same time period. That so this is, yes. So this yeah. is from the period of before he's working with David O. McKay. So he was doing all these sketches, he's maybe trying out different scenes. That's and right. Okay. And he's going page by page. Wow. He's literally going, you can literally see, and he's annotating mm -hmm. the images by saying, mm -hmm. you know, Omni chapter one, okay. um, verse six. Okay. Um, and this one does not have a specific scripture because mm -hmm. It does, it does relate to Mosiah chapters 1 through 3, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it's his own invention of a scene. Right. Right? Yeah. And I think that that is really interesting because he called himself an illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, and illustration by definition, at least my definition in the way that I think classically trained artists think of it like he did, was that illustration rather than fine art is text dependent. Okay. Right? And so there are literal illustrations of text, and then there are more abstract interpretations of the text. Yeah. So this is an abstract interpretation. Yeah. In the scriptures, we know that um, Benjamin is a direct descendant of the scripture guardians, the okay. plate guardians, uh -huh. right? Whatever we want to call them. Sure, yeah. Those who have inherited the responsibility from Nephi down to keep a record of the Nephites, and, and the people, and, um, and they're also, not always, but often the rulers. So we know that Benjamin uh, arrives in this land where, the, where, where, where uh, he's got to defend his people. Mm -hmm. It says he fights with his own sword. Right. Um, this is right before Mosiah 1, right? It talks about just the, briefly this kind of like young Benjamin. Mm -hmm. And then we open up with Mosiah 1 where he... Um, first tells his sons about the responsibility of the plates and ruling. And then he talks uh, in two and three to his people mm -hmm. as he's retiring and passing on the kingdom to Mosiah. Right. <clears throat> so in that speech, he says um, in chapters two and three, he says, I've always, I, I defended even with my own sword, yeah. our freedom. But he said, if you could always have, um, he said, uh, I've, uh, I've been a king who has never taxed you with a heavy burden. Yeah, but he's And in fact, them. I've labored for my own mm -hmm. sustenance, my own, my, my, for my own needs. Right. Right? And, he, and Freeberg's interpretation of this is brilliant because yep. what he has is he has old King Benjamin with a small garden and a garden hoe. Yeah, I love it. I love that interpretation. <laughs> just kind right? of propped there like he's just set it down and sitting, yeah. sitting in his chair coming in from the garden. That's right. Yeah. And it, I mean, it, it doesn't say, yeah. it doesn't say in the scriptures, 
and you didn't feed me, and I had my own garden, yeah. and I didn't tax you guys to give me Sad. food, right? Yeah. No, it's, it's the interpretation is from, from Freeburg is that King Benjamin is ruling the country as this kind of, um, <clears throat> this kind of Roman ideal mm. of, of, a, of an early general uh -huh. who retires from the farm to defend the people and then goes back to the farm when he's done. Oh, yeah. That, like Numa. Numa, uh, the Roman general. Was it did Cincinnatus? That. Didn't Cincinnatus he? did that yeah. too, apparently, right? <laughs> yeah. It's the idea that you were, that he is this. He, he, he's this, um, the ultimate ideal of a, of a selfless leader. Yeah. And he's sitting there and the younger Mosiah, who doesn't have a chair, yeah. comes and kneels down. Yeah. Yeah. And what I don't know here is whether or not the idea is that, it says that after Benjamin gives a speech mm -hmm. in chapter three and um, gives the people a new name, yeah. essentially kind of re- covenanting giving them a new covenant mm -hmm. as god's people um uh, that they also he also gives them mosiah as their king right. who's this theocratic prophet seer revelator we know because of his later experience mm -hmm. who's a righteous king mm -hmm. but we know he lives for three more years yeah. benjamin does oh, okay. after that and i wonder if this is one of those moments when this is how i interpreted it okay Benjamin's old, he's retired, he's gone back to the, to the, to the vegetable patch. Mm. And Mosiah has been king and is coming back for counsel. Oh, interesting. That's how I interpret it. Okay. Right? Yeah. So he's, he's already the, they're, they're, one's retired and, and he's sitting there with the thought, yeah. this, uh, this Benjamin. It's almost as if Mosiah is saying, okay, dad. <laughs> What would you have done in this situation? Yeah. I need your counsel. And you can see Benjamin is, he's not looking at Mosiah. He's <clears throat> lost in his own thoughts. So That's right. Maybe Mosiah is delivering this message. Yeah. I mean, this is conjecture. Sure. I'm sure there's room yeah. for all kinds of interpretation in this. I, I also wondered if this could be that moment in Mosiah 1 where Benjamin has called Mosiah to him to tell him you're going to, now be the protector of the plates and the that Liahona could and be the sort of too. Laban and we want you know I want you to be the next king and I want you to call the people together. So yeah. I could see that yeah. interpretation too. Yeah, but I like what you're saying about how he he seems to be thinking about something he wants to, to say. There's also another aspect here that I wish this is the one of my greatest regrets in his estate. He left behind his national geographics. Okay. And I didn't think much of him at the time. And then I saw somebody who did buy them. And he has in them um, all of these pieces of paper where he highlights a belt that he saw in an Aztec oh. uh -huh. illustration. Because what happens is when he really gets into those eight, those last four, uh -huh. is he goes, um, he, he asks David O. McKay what his interpretation of who the Nephites and Lamanites were. Mm -hmm. And they tell, and he says, go talk to the anthropologists at BYU. And the head of the anthropology department says, I don't know who the Nephites and Lamanites were. I'm not <laughs> going to tell you. Okay. Right? How do I know? Yeah. Right? And, and so Arnold says, he went back and no one was going to tell him what the Liahona actually looked like. They weren't going to tell him the size. They weren't going to tell him the materials. They weren't going to tell him like yeah. any of that stuff. We just don't know. But he had to actually paint it. Mm -hmm. And so it was on him. And he said he knew the moment he won that battle when he went to a fireside in his stake. And Bruce R. McConkie, who is very scriptorian, right, shows up with a replica of the Liahona that had been in Arnold Freeberg's painting oh, okay. and held it up and said to everybody, this is what the Liahona looked like. Oh. And Arnold laughed and said, not until I told you what it looked like. That is amazing. Right? And, and so I keep pieces together from the National Geographic all of these mm -hmm. these costumes mm -hmm. and all of these figures and he said he tried to solve the problem of a what nephites and lamanites looked like by creating a spiritual race which when people tell me oh they all look like muscle men mm -hmm. I say well you know he's called them spiritual olympians yeah in his mind these guys are kind of that yeah right? i mean mosiah a little more you can see the, the muscles there on the arms and but, it's, but it's symbolic right that it's he said symbolic it their spiritual strength that he's again this 
try to make it very easy to read and illustrative so that you can look at it That's and right. just, it makes sense immediately to the viewer. Yeah. I mean, it's the problem with, a, with an illustrator. I mean, yeah. if you've got, if you've got um, somebody who's an abstract artist or somebody who's going towards the abstract, well, yeah. but because he goes abstract in the racial sense towards this idea of mm -hmm. a spiritual race, mm -hmm. And when I say race, I don't mean race as in black and white right. or in the terms that we use it today, but I mean in the terms that he used it, mm -hmm. which was they're not Scandinavian, they're not Anglo-Saxon, they're not French, they're not German, they're not African, they're not Aztecs, they're not Mayans, they're this other group. Mm -hmm. Then he also gets caught in the trap of the hairdo is from the 1950s, Sure. Yeah. right? Yeah. Because that's what yeah. he was going with. I think this is so fascinating, Micah, because it is an important reminder that artists are making choices and yeah. that there's so much that we just don't know. And when artists are asked to depict it, they have to fill in the blanks a lot of times. Right. And I think it, as viewers, it's important for us to keep that in mind that um, these aren't photographs. They, this is one artist's interpretation and there may yeah. be other ways to, to visualize it. Absolutely. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. And and he's going to get flack, and he got flack, yeah. and he still gets flack. Yeah. And this one didn't end up in the reproductions. So you yeah. can imagine on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You have to say, okay, you never really thought that a conversation with a garden hoe yeah. between <laughs> Benjamin and Mosiah yeah. would be one of 12 images to represent the Book of Mormon. Right. But it says a lot about how yeah. he just, it's almost as if he's a method actor and he's getting into the scriptures as much as possible mm -hmm. and he's scribbling and, and something like this he would have done in a couple hours really that's a couple hour sketch i i really love that it is different from the 12 paintings that we all know that there is this um familial focus which which i think is important in the book of mormon um is a, a theme throughout the book of mormon this like you said passing down this um, trust of the plates and, and care of the people and the, the gospel um, and I love the introspection and the just relationship depicted here it's different than what we see in his paintings and yeah. so it's really fun to see to see this and we're also really grateful to you for um, allowing us to put this in the Book of Mormon art catalog and happy to do it if, if you want to see more of Arnold Freeberg's drawings, um, Micah has allowed us to put them in the Book of Mar Mormon Art Catalog. We have a couple hundred in there, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So you can check them out there. We're thrilled to do it. I mean, we're, we just see ourselves as temporary stewards of these things, yeah. right? And so some of these will, you know, they're not major works of art, but I think they add to the development of our mm -hmm. visual history, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's exactly right. They're an important document of our history. And just another, like, they, it made me think about these scriptures in a way that I hadn't before. Um, so I'm grateful to you for talking to us today about it. Thrilled to do it. Yeah, it's fun. Thank you. Yeah.